Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. We're going to be talking about creating your role. This may be a first or an early start in your product management career, and specifically branding for those early opportunities. My name is Janice O'Pobery. I am a director of product at Stitch Fix, and I really look forward to sharing a little bit about my personal journey. But before we jump into the contents of today, just want to set a quick reminder that this content is for educational purposes only. Uh, the opinions expressed are solely mine, and they don't necessarily reflect those of my current or previous employers. For an agenda for today, um, I'll actually share a little bit about me and my story. And then as well, we're going to really dive into how product roles are not one size fits all. Um, they have a lot of flex and there's a good way that you can kind of get a sense of what's good for you. Then we'll dive into how you actually raise your hand and stretch into these first roles. And then finally, the secret sauce to succeed um, when you're given those opportunities. A little bit about me. Um, I actually got my bachelor's at Sam Houston State University. Um, this was a while back, but really what it allowed me to do is kind of have a launch pad for a lot of my entrepreneurial projects. Uh, I didn't go to school specifically for anything in the tech world. Um, I wasn't a computer science major, actually studied health, um, but I had a lot of the skills that I use today that I was using on different side projects. And so um, a lot of those started to kind of gather together for me as I started to take on entrepreneurial projects. Then I uh, joined Pearson, one of my entrepreneurial projects actually led me to Pearson um, and grew my career, um, which landed me in Rhode Island at an agency. Um, I was actually in more of a strategy growth role and I had a lot of friends who were in the tech industry. And this is really at the beginning, I think of, um, of what the industry is now. And I kept hearing a lot about this idea of product. Um, and we'll kind of get into that story later. But that is the, the place in my career where I actually raised my hand and made a very um, intentional decision to go into product. That decision has led me into some really amazing opportunities in my career. Um, I joined Hilton as a senior product manager and then Abercrombie as the same and now serve as a director of product at Stitch Fix. So I wanted to kind of show you this big picture. Um, I think it's sometimes helpful for us to understand that um, sometimes our career paths are very linear and sometimes they have a lot of movement to it. And I think it's just important that we leverage where we are today to get to where we wanna to be tomorrow. Before we dive into some of the tactics, I'm going to share a little bit about how I actually raised my hand in my own career. So as I mentioned before, when I was um, at an agency, I was really focused on strategy and growth for a new um, region that we were in. And as I started to hear about this opportunity or this world of product, I actually didn't know a lot about it. Um, I just knew the people in my life as friends who were entering into this space and I knew their skill sets and that they were really enthusiastic about the work that they were doing. So I did a little bit of research and um, many years ago, there wasn't as much product methodology and information available. So I had to do a lot of the connecting of the dots. But what I found was that products seemed to be this place where I could flex my, my natural muscle, my natural skills, do something different on a daily basis and solve unique challenges um, and have fun while I did it. And so what I decided to do, I wasn't ready to make a very hard turn in my career. I really enjoyed what I was doing for work. However, I did know that our agency had clients um, that had products, even though we weren't serving um, them specifically in that area. And so what I did is I created kind of an internal proposal of my own to go to my leadership and raise my hand and say, I'd like to take on some of our client products. Here are the services that I think we can offer. Here's what I think we can do. And here's the impact that I think I can have. Um, so I spent a lot of time really honing in on what I was proposing to my company and what they should thus propose to their clients. But ultimately it landed me with a yes. It was the first yes in my career 
that allowed me to say, I'm using product management skills. It was not 100% of my um, focus in that role, but it did increase over time. And I think this is so important as you think about using the opportunities that you may have available to you right now, if you are currently working, really trying to um, leverage those as you take the next step, because again, all career decisions are not necessarily going to be linear, but you want to leverage what you have available to you. So ultimately, I did get a yes. I was able to actually get into a product role um, in part that allowed my career to actually grow over time um, as that capacity of my product focus grew over time as well. So I want to show this because I think this is probably the most common product illustration in the industry. Um, typically we see product sitting in the center of these three worlds, which is business, technology, and kind of this customer UX space. And I think this is a phenomenal um, illustration for what product managers do and the different worlds that they're listening and responding to. One amendment that I would make, or maybe more so a note that I would draw your attention to, is the amount of overlap between all three of these areas. What you will find when you're in a product role is that every organization has a different amount of overlap between these three functions. And so what I mean by that is, in organization A, you might find that the product managers tend to have um, a far more tech heavy focus than they do at organization B. And so the overlap for product might lean or skew into that space. Again, you might have organization B where they are radically focused on the customer sentiment and user experience. And so it will begin to skew um, with heavier overlap into that area. I think this is really great news because we all have unique skills, unique backgrounds and experiences that will make us better fit for some opportunities than others. So as you're thinking about the world of product, I would really enjoy the, the perspective that product is not one size fits all. Um, so as you look at different opportunities or different open doors that may not yet even be an opportunity, Take some liberty with that. Take some flexibility with that um, because you can probably either make that role um, better fit for what your skills are or better fit for what the organization needs. Um, so, so take some flexibility with that. Now we're going to go into the actual ask. Uh, stretching for the first role. I use the word stretch because I think sometimes we can think that we land into our first role, um, but there's this soft moment of making a decision that it's what you want, um, perhaps raising your hand for an internal or an external role, and then actually making the stretch because you're flexing a new muscle in your skill set. Um, you may not be a phenomenal product manager yet, but you have the right foundation. So uh, we'll talk about what this stretch looks like. But more practically, we're going to go over four key steps. Number one, assessing what the current need of the business is. Number two, defining what value a product role as a product manager, what you're going to bring to that team or that organization. Third, we do want to respectfully ask for the opportunity to stretch. This is the moment of asking. And then finally, we want to define what success looks like and ultimately deliver. So we'll go through each of these one by one. So for one, assessing what the current need of the business is. This is often one of the most underutilized steps of the process, and it's probably the most important. So we know that um, we might have this aspiration to be a product manager, maybe it's our first time, or we're looking to make um, a key next step in our career for a new role or a new opportunity. And so we can be really close to our perspective around what we're looking to get. I would challenge, and this is to myself as well, is that we want to also flip the lens and think from the business perspective. So if you're working in an organization today, you really want to think about what are the business needs, agnostic to being in product or in a specific function, just what is the business needing today? 
you might find that a business is in a place of growth where they need to be very um, ambitious about acquisition or growing the business. You might find that one business is really trying to narrow in on what's most important to them and get really good on a few key things versus the whole universe of, of things that can be done. When you're in the organization, I think you have a really great seat to see these opportunities or these needs more clearly. But even if you are external, really tap into market trends and really put yourself in the, in the viewpoint of someone who's working um, in the center of that business so you can figure out what those needs are. Go ahead and write that down. Sometimes we make mental notes and um, it's not as concise or clear as we need it to be. But why we want to do this is because when we're looking at taking on a new opportunity or even raising our hand for a new opportunity, we're going to need to be able to speak from both perspectives, both our own of what we're going to bring to the table, but most importantly, what what benefit the business is going to have and we'll get into that in step two so the summary here is be really clear or intentional about understanding the needs of the business of the organization you're trying to impact two we want to define what value a new product role is going to bring to the team Again, I think it is so important that we get very tactical about this um, and we really think about um, more than just how we're going to benefit from having that role or having that opportunity, but we think about how that team is going to benefit from having us there. So I'll use a similar example that I shared in the last step. If we know that a team or an organization has been really focused on doing many different things, the value that a new product role might be able to bring to the team is to help the teams have focus, working on the most important work first, or being able to make hard decisions as to why we should work on this thing first or this thing now. These are foundational product skills that sometimes we overlook, but ultimately it's going to help you propose um, to your leadership or to an external opportunity why you should be in that seat. So you wanna be very clear about what value you're going to bring to the team and the organization um, in addition to the personal value that having the opportunity is going to bring to your career. So always constantly challenge yourself to flip that coin. Once you know what value you're gonna get yourself, flip the coin and really think about it from the team perspective, the business perspective. And again, you wanna be very clear about what that value is. So a challenge that I make for myself is I bullet everything out. And if I can't say it in a single sentence, I really kind of need to hone in on what I'm trying to communicate to my audience. For the next one, um, this is the big step. <laughs> this is the big ask. So we want to respectfully ask for the opportunity to stretch. Um, this is probably where I hear the most questions from those in my network around how do you actually ask? Well, we wanna reference steps one and steps two. We wanna make sure that when we're asking, we're not only speaking from our own um, perspective of, I would like this opportunity. We really want to start to um, wrap in how we're going to be able to help um, the team by meeting the business needs of step one. So take the business needs that you gathered, then take the benefit you're going to bring to the team and really swaddle that in your ask. This may sound something a bit like, um, I'm really excited for the opportunity um, to grow my career in this organization. I know that the company has XYZ business needs, and this is really interesting to me. I think that if I can step into a more product-focused role or onto the product team, I can bring X value to help solve that initial need. Um, so that's how I would probably frame the ask so that all three of those elements your, your benefit, the business need and the team value, I can swaddle all of those together to make the right recipe for the ask. Um, as well, I think a lot of times leaders, we, we really value when someone is conscientious of, of, the, um, of what they're asking for beyond themselves. And they're really thinking about the impact that they're going to draw. So I would make sure that I have those, those um, elements together. 
In addition to that, I think we have to be um, open to a response. So of course we want to hear a yes. Um, you might find that someone immediately says yes, or they say pull together a plan and let me know how you want to do that or what that looks like. Um, be responsive to that and be open to different responses that you may not have planned for. Something that I think is really helpful as well is um, trying to maybe strip out a little bit of the jargon when you make this ask. So for instance, as product managers, we probably tend to drop the words methodology or prioritization or roadmaps really casually. But instead of saying something like, um, I'm going to be focused on roadmapping, you may say something like, I'll be focused on execution plans to help the team stay on track. It just almost eliminates a little bit of the filtering or interpretation needed for someone to hear your case really clearly and tie it back to very um, base needs. No matter what function your audience may be in, they understand that. So before we move on, I think the key takeaway here is you have to raise your hand, you have to make the ask and make an ask that extends beyond just the value that you get and be open to feedback, no matter what it may be. Finally, we want to define what success looks like and we want to deliver. This is so important. Before, let's say you get an ask, but before you actually um, move into an opportunity, I would just take a moment to think about what does success look like? And this may be something that you um, seek out internally. This may also be something where you ask your leadership what their expectations are. That moment of alignment and really in some ways inspiration can really help you um, to keep focus as you start to embark or stretch into this new skill set or this new opportunity and role. So I personally like to see quantitative um, metrics of success for myself because it just keeps me um, very focused, but there might be some qualitative uh, metrics of success. So I'll start with the quant. If I'm really focused on um, perhaps a very specific feature, I have a good idea of what metrics I want to hit with that feature. Um, and so those metrics are much easier to, to track. On the qualitative side, it might be like in a roadmap scenario, it might be that um, you're a little bit more focused on making sure that the team has focus. So that's a little bit harder to measure, but what you could do is just ask your colleagues, hey, are you feeling more clear about what we're working on and why? Um, so you need to figure out for you and your team the opportunity which side of the house you want to kind of uh, build success metrics around, whether that be quantitative or qualitative. But regardless of what you determine is best for you, the most important part is you want to deliver. So I like to make metrics that perhaps I come back to in 30, 60, and 90 days. But I don't want to just look over those metrics on my own. I want to look over those metrics and then go back to my initial audience to say, you gave me an opportunity to do this and now I've delivered it. You want to be able to go back and evangelize how that opportunity, you did what you said you were going to do, you added value, and that's how you actually increase your scope. So perhaps you got a yes where only 25, 50% of your capacity could be focused on product, or you could shadow for X amount of days with a, a product team. That's okay. This still applies. You want to take whatever you've been given and then return back um, with your ability to deliver on what you set out to do. And that's how you make room for more uh, capacity or more trust in what you're asking for over time. No place in your career are you never kind of cycling this process where you've been given an opportunity and you're returning back saying, I delivered with that opportunity that I was given. 
Finally, I also think that a lot of leaders will really appreciate the fact that you follow through, not just to get the ask or get the opportunity initially, but you're really closing the loop and reminding them why they made that better, why they made that opportunity and gave it to you specifically. So I think it's just incredibly beneficial for you and your career, no matter where you are in your career. Next, I wanna go over um, some secret sauce skills to succeed. So you can use the skills that you have now to bolster your product career. You do not have to wait for a perfect title. I think this is probably one of the key things that I want you to remember. You have skills and experiences right now, even if you have not been in a product role, that you can use to bolster your product career or a case to start to nurture your product career. So I'm gonna call, talk through just a couple that always stand out to me that I think sometimes we overlook them, but they're so beneficial as we think about why someone would be a great product manager or how they flex the skills um, to, to do some of the challenging work that product entails. So the first one is strategic thinking. And I specifically mean um, the flexible thinking of being able to be macro and very tactical. Um, so that, that, that mental flex of being able to kind of rise out of the weeds and see the big picture, think strategically and act on that, that's something that is not exclusive to product. So I want you to think through your personal career, how you might have used your strategic thinking skills in order to move work along or to make decisions that were high impact. That is a skill set that you can use and emphasize, say, in your resume or with your internal leadership or with different opportunities that will help bolster your product career as well communication skills. Product people are communicators. You must be able to evangelize and inspire and clarify and simplify for your audience. Your audience will always shift and be different. And so many different roles, even outside of product, are constantly using communication skills. So feel free to reference some of those accomplishments that you've had earlier in your career and highlight those in your product um, in the case for you to be a product uh, manager or to move into a new role. These are skills that you've probably been using and developing over years that you can use as you think about your next move in product. As well, technical expertise. This is another one that you don't have to be in product to really get a um, just a comfort with technology. Um, so definitely lean into that. And, and if you do already have that, highlight that. That's going to make you a really great product manager. And I specifically am thinking about that illustration that we went through that shows how different roles are going to lean into tech or into business or into the customer space more heavily based on the organization that you're in. If you have those skills, Use that to really um, bolster your career. Then as well, customer-centric focus. This is much like the tech expertise. This is a, a, something that I think sometimes we don't really think about, but if you really have a strong sentiment towards your users or to your customers, these are things that are not limited to product, but will help you flourish in your product career. And then finally, prioritization. Prioritization is something that we will deal with in all areas of life, even outside of our work and career. And if you have developed strong skills to be able to make clear and decisive decisions around what you prioritize, especially when things are limited or resources are limited, again, this is a skill that's going to help you be a strong product owner. So feel free to highlight those experiences as you think through your next opportunity. In summary, I wanna go over four key takeaways for us. The first is there is no one size fits all. You have to be willing to look at product roles for what they are, and it might not always have the, the word product on top of it. Um, some organizations don't even have product teams. 
you can maybe be the first, um, but really look at opportunities with um, a sense of openness so that you can you can see that that three prong um, illustration we talked about. So you can see that in its different forms, because it is always going to look different depending on what opportunity is in front of you. As well, no predefined path. Use your creativity and skills in order to get your foot in the door for your first or your next move in your career. As well, raise your hand. <laughs> no one can read our minds. So sometimes we have to raise our hand and say, I want that opportunity or I see an opportunity here. May I tell you about what I see? Can we talk about that? And that's how you grow your career um, or one of the ways in which you grow your career. And then finally, deliver with what you have. Resources will always fluctuate. Um, so be focused on delivering value above all, no matter what the circumstance or the environment is, really be value focused and you will do extremely well in your career. So that's all we have today. Uh, thank you so much for joining me.